So what I'll do then, I'll hand over to Katie and we'll get started. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Um, we've earmarked an hour for this, but I don't want to talk at you for a whole hour. And what I'd really like is if you've got any questions. Um, what I've done is I'm going to share my screen in a minute. Um, so I've put together some slides. But what I'd really like, if you've got any questions, just pop them in the chat and I'll try my best to answer them. And if I can't answer them tonight, I'll, I'll sort of contact you and answer them um, maybe tomorrow. So I thought, well, Tams and I thought it'd be a really nice thing to do with September just kicking off. And um, it's a really nice time to reset and get yourself sort of back on track. And I know I'm decompressing after the school holidays. I sort of feel like I'm elated one minute and the other minutes I'm sort of, ah, I don't know what to do. So for me, it's a really important time. I'm gonna just start to share my screen. Uh, I think it's that one. Bear with me because I am not the best te te technology guru on the planet. Okay, here we go. So just give me two seconds. Brilliant. Okay, so here we go. So I hope you all can hear me okay. And these um, these slides are really more as a guide just to give you a little bit of focus. You don't have to look at me. You don't have to think about anything else. So thank you so much for joining me. And the whole purpose, and I've sort of called this my reset, rebalance and re-energize um, session. And I just think, it, it, you know, for me, this time of year is is the time to do that. So I know 1st of January, what everyone thinks as a personal trainer or nutritional therapist, 1st of January is the month that everyone wants to reset your bodies. But in actual fact, people want to just go into hibernation. And now's the time to sort of really reset yourself, rebalance yourself, and hopefully get lots of energy in the lead up to Christmas. This quote for me is just, I thought I'd kick start with this because I think it's something... Um, I know it's, it, you know, we talk about it, you know, we need to take care of your body, but really, we really do. And there's so much more talk now, more than ever, about our, our wellness, our what we eat, how and why we should eat certain things, you know, movement, fitness, um, energy. There's so many different facets to being healthy. And as somebody who's been through an enormous journey over the last 10 years with my personal life, I think it's, you know, I, it's taken me a long time to, for the penny to really drop. Now that it has, I really want to sort of share that wisdom. And hopefully you will take away some key points today that I think will help you sort of think, oh God, right, I should be eating that. Or, or actually, yeah, there is a real reason why I should be doing that. So I really hope this little, this little nugget here, just think about that. And this is where I want to link it all back to in this, um, in this, I guess, presentation today um okay so now I've got to work out oh here we go so what and why um why now why what what why, why should we be talking about this um and I just popped down some key things here that some of you might be experiencing one or two of them you might be experiencing all of them you might be somebody you know might be experiencing some of these so you know, a lot of people I know, um, no matter who you are, what you're doing, are probably suffering with a bit of fatigue post the summer. Some people are quite overwhelmed, you know, kids going back to school and you're sort of like, you feel like you don't know your routine. Maybe you're bloated, maybe you've overindulged over the summer and you've sort of feel ugh, completely and utterly not yourself. Or you're just, you know, you're feeling your hormones all over the shop and you just can't quite get a grip. So, these are some of the things I know a lot of my clients are experiencing. I personally experience it as well. So I, I hope that these, you know, you can relate to some of these points. And um, I'm going to go on to talk about how we how we address them. So for me, it's all about good routine. And I think when I was in the thick of my deep, deepest, darkest burnout, depression, dealing with young kids on my own, divorce, the whole thing, I was just not in a good routine. And I didn't, I didn't realize that that was so important. I didn't realize that if you actually started to focus on you, you'd be able to tackle the challenges that were thrown at you. And for me, it's, you know, it's these three pillars, I'm going to call them my three pillars of nutrition, fitness, and well-being. And it doesn't mean you suddenly have to eat, you know, 
a hundred percent perfect diet all the time or at all or do a hundred exercise classes a month or you know indulge yourself in um, um self-care activities but what it means is eating the right food at the right time it means moving your body it means taking some time out for you and i think the more we do this the better equipped we are to deal with the things that are thrown at us and from my own personal experience you know i'm very passionate about this without that routine a lot of things fall apart I, I i get more anxiety i feel bloated i can't sleep properly i get a bit spotty you know i i feel different when i'm out of control and i think if you could really take away from today just by getting you know some really nice juicy bits of nutrition into your life some good movement and and we'll talk about what that is and also just having that balance in your life and a bit of self well-being and self care I do think you'll feel the difference. So that's that's where we're at today. And this is sort of where it's all, all at. And please, if you have any questions, you suddenly see something, jot it in the little chat or, or, or talk to me. I'm, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to hear. So in terms of nutrition, obviously this is the tip of the iceberg. So I'm giving you some real top level things, but the things that I can't live without. So nutrition, we have this amazing organ in our body called the liver, and it's our biggest solid organ, and it's responsible for loads of hundreds of um um uh, i can't think of the word loads of it's responsible for loads and loads and loads of things if we don't detoxify our liver if we don't support our liver all those toxins be it stress be it hormones be it diet be it um, um pollutants they go through your liver if you're not supporting your liver it gets reabsorbed no. oh, can i get you just to pop is that on mute? Um, just so I can, is that, is everyone on mute? If we don't support our liver, we will, everything will get recirculated and we'll become sluggish. Our skin will become affected. You'll, you'll get that, you'll get the sort of gist of everything I say. Everything we do is linked back to how we feel ultimately. And also we want to live for a long time. We don't, you know, we're here for the long term. We don't want anything to, um, to um, affect our health. So in terms of liver supporting foods, this should be your number one thing. You need to be having three to four um, fistful portions um, at least a week, okay? I aim for two to three a day. And I've just listed a few. Again, the list, this is not everything. These are some of the key things. You Lots of garlic and ginger, lots of green tea. And if you don't like green tea, make sure you're having the garlic and ginger or maybe have some hot lemon and water. And there's so many things you can do to support your liver. So liver boosting foods are really, really important. So it flushes everything out, gets rid of the toxins and balances your hormones as well. And I think there's probably quite a lot of us here today who might have a little bit of hormonal imbalance going on. I certainly do. The other big one, massive one, is support our digestive system. So 80% um, of our serotonin, so that's our happy hormone, is in our gut. Now, if our gut is congested, bloated, not working properly, guess what that's going to do? It's going to affect your mood. It's going to affect your the way you feel. It's going to affect the way you sleep. It's going to affect your skin. Everything gets reabsorbed. You want it to get out. You know, you eat you want it out. So fiber, 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 you've got to be having fiber. And this doesn't mean eating loads of um, rivetas and sort of stodgy fiber that's going to make you feel bloated. You want the opposite. You want it to get out. Whole grains are really important for, um, for getting your digestive system moving. So brown rice, brown basmati rice, delicious. Um, go for anything that's whole grain as opposed to white processed foods five portions of fruit and veg a day now we know that but what's really high in fiber so think about the things that are going to get that that moving kiwi fruits with the skin on raspberries cruciferous vegetables so um your um broccolis your cauliflowers your cabbages they are all really good at helping push everything out oats for breakfast flax seeds on your cereal lentils um and I, for one, have suffered. And in fact, I think it was when I, again, at the peak of my um, stress, 
I was not regular at all. You know, this that was a major thing for me. And having sorted out my digestive system, I, I genuinely feel better. My body functions better. So I think that's a really, um, really important one. We hear it all the time, but it is it, it has a direct impact on your um, on the way you feel. So that's really, really important. Boosting your LNG levels. Now, I know you can get um, all sorts of different things to boost your energy levels. Sorry, there's a spelling mistake there. Um, but the first thing, a lot of people feel um, they have this sort of brain fog. They feel a little bit dehydrated. They sort of go for snacks because they, they need that pickup. Often people are dehydrated. And there's a really, really key correlation in the way your energy is, um, the way you feel and your hydration levels. And I know this is so simple. We know to drink water, but you know, just up your water intake and just see how you feel because I truly think you will feel, feel better. It will also help flush everything out as well. Um, green leafy vegetables, you probably hear this all the time. Eat your greens, eat your greens, eat your greens. But why is that important for energy? They are, they contain your B vitamins and B vitamins are um, your energy vitamins. And for, um, just gonna go a little, um, green tea, yeah, I'm going to come on to that. I tell you what, I'll come back to those questions and um, if you don't mind, and then I'll, I'll come into that in, um, yeah, afterwards. Um, so, um, how do I move that? Um, so your green leafy vegetables, B vitamins. So as women, you know, in our 30s and 40s and 50s, we need those B vitamins. They get depleted as our, as our body changes and mature. So you need those large handfuls of green leafy vegetables. That might be a handful of spinach in your smoothie. It might be just a really delicious big green salad, not the um, iceberg lettuces, but the green leafy vegetables, they give you energy. They also contain magnesium. Magnesium relaxes you. It helps your nervous system. So green leafy vegetables are really important. Um, sleep, 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 sleep. You must sleep. And I know a lot of us are compromised with young children, with stress, with um, bad routines as well. It's just so easy to fall out of that. But you need to be hitting your, your sleep levels. You know, you need to be to be getting as much sleep as you possibly can. Um, removing the sugars and the processed foods. Now sugar we know is an enemy, it's excess calories, but it also makes us incredibly um, low. It gives us that spike, but it crashes us down. So that affects our energy, it affects our mood, it affects everything. And anything processed, so anything with a really wacky label on, anything you grab that it does not contain um, natural ingredients, it's processed, it's going to play havoc with your energy levels, it, it, it just does. So remove high levels of caffeine. So somebody's just asked a question on the um, green tea. So green tea does contain caffeine, and I'm not suggesting you have to cut out caffeine altogether. I have, I have a cup of coffee every day and I'm never giving that up, <laughs> quite frankly, I like it. But um, green tea contains an, a huge amount of antioxidants. So I think the other thing that I'm really passionate about is getting that balance. I'm never going to say to you, don't have a glass of wine or a bag of crisps ever again in your life, because if that's a treat and if that's something you really enjoy, if you do that every single day, you might not be feeling um, brilliant. If weight loss is something really important to you, don't eat the process, um, don't drink excess alcohol. We all know it's excess calories. So it's all about balance. So if you are going, if you're drinking five cups of tea, um, regular tea a day, and you swap with two cups of um, green tea, you, you've just got to work out the gains. So that's going to give you quite a lot of um, health benefits. Um, can you get decaffeinated green tea? I, which I, you can get it. Okay, there you go. So you can. I'm always wary of decaffeinated um, products, if I'm really honest, because they're often anything that's um, decaffeinated, low fat, low sugar is often replaced with other things. So just be sure to check the ingredients of that, but certainly have a look out for it. Um, and the other way to boost your energy levels is not sitting on the sofa unless it's a, you know, it's a rainy day and you just need that sort of comfort. Get out and move. 
everyone can schedule in a bit of time to get outside and move. It will boost your endorphins. It will give you energy. So I think that's, you know, I think that's really important um, is to actually just get outside and move. The, the next thing I want to talk about in terms of nutrition is protein and um, having pro good quality protein um, every single day. In fact, if you're somebody suffering with any hormonal issues or you're somebody who craves sugar or you somebody who um, your mood fluctuates, protein can really help with this. And I think gone are the days when we sort of associate eating lots of protein with big, heavy bodybuilders. It's, you know, we're talking um, a palm sized portion would be the, the correct amount. Um, obviously, yogurt's a little bit different, but I guess the equivalent of a palm sized portion of yogurt, lentils, chickpeas, fish, chicken. So as I said, it helps satiety. It helps you stay fuller for longer. So it's going to prevent these blood sugar levels going all over the place. It's gonna stabilize your mood. It's gonna give you that real sort of balance that you're looking for. So, um, and I think, again, I'm not sure if there's any men here, but certainly for women, we are really, really in need of this protein, um, especially as our bodies mature as well. So um, that's really important, get it in. Vitamin C rich foods, again, this is something that we all know to have. Why do we need it? Well, of course, it's going to boost our immune system, which is going to be if anyone suffered from COVID or they've had a cold or flu, you know, we need our immune system to be strong. But the other thing that vitamin C does, it actually supports our stress levels and it supports our adrenal glands. So it mops up all that stress. It really helps balance out your body. And um, we should be having at least one portion a day. And um, I guess we all know that vitamin C, lemons, oranges, but peppers, you know, especially for kids as well, chop up your peppers, give them them as a little snack. Um, kiwi fruits, amazing, full of vitamin C, berries. Um, and also it's going to help your skin vitality. I think um, when, you're, when your gut is sluggish, when you're stressed, when you're not getting good sleep, when you're not eating the right food, our skin will take a battering. So get those vitamin C rich foods in there. Another question, any tips to make wholemeal rice taste? Yes. Funny enough, I did something tonight, Mike. I'm going to come on to that. Um, in fact, I put, a, I put lots of different things on my Instagram accounts. If you're not following me, jump on there. But I made something delicious tonight with my rice, and I'll tell you about that in a minute um okay fitness so you know just just sort of um ending that whole nutrition those are my top tips those are my sort of don't don't non they're non-negotiables obviously if you have other issues going on you might need to add on some extra other things um that's just you know those are the things i think we need to be doing to support our bodies um for the energy for to support stress levels to get our gut happy um so those are my sort of i'd say my top tips fitness now fitness is non-negotiable for me and um i i go through phases of just you know having the time and just having the passion for it and other times where i think right okay i'm going to just take it le le slightly low impact anyway whatever you do i i i cannot encourage movement enough you will feel better you will never regret doing a workout. You will never regret going out and sort of having, you know, that, that half an hour power walk, maybe get your ear pods on, put your trainers on, go meet a friend, get, do whatever you, if that feels good to you. That might be, as I said, walking, running, classes, outdoor workouts, set yourself a challenge. So maybe by the end of September, you've been out and done five walks a week or two runs a week or whatever it is, or you decide that gardening is going to be your thing, you know, get and do something. Because I think that movement, as our bodies mature, we need to build bone density, we need to keep muscle mass. Um, and you just got to make the time. I, I um, Somebody contacted me from Frollo just saying, how do you make the time? And um, for me, as I said, it's non-negotiable. I It's something I would I would either get up half an hour early, or I would just you know, when the babies were young, I'd put them down. I sort of just literally do a half an hour. 
once you've got into that routine, you'll always do it, but it's just breaking that routine and finding that, um, finding that time. I don't read enough and I know people that read. So that I guess fitness and movement and um, training is something that is my therapy. And without shadow, I would never, ever, ever have got through um, my dark, deep times without doing something. Um, so yeah, to get to find something you enjoy, create a routine, and um, you'll never regret doing it. Just you know, you really will feel the benefits. I think almost instantly. And don't be afraid either. If, if it's something you haven't done for ages, don't be afraid. The first, the first one or two sessions will always feel a little bit daunting and a little bit sort of, ugh. But you'll you you know you'll love it. I promise. Okay, and in terms of. Um, your well-being and this this some people some people sort of sort of uh, wince when when the words well-being and self-care come up because I think it is it's it can be a bit cheesy and um it can be a bit well I don't have time I just don't have time and I think you know we we're probably all guilty of that aren't we we you know we are juggling a million and one things some of us have got multiple children some of us are working some of us are in the darkest, deepest times of divorce and separation and all the other things that life throws at us. But actually taking some time out for you is, um, is in, as important as anything else. When we, <clears throat> excuse me, when we, when we rest our bodies, our bodies go into um, digestion mode, they go into recovery mode, they go into safe mode, and your bodies actually need that downtime. They, you know, they can't, you can't keep running on adrenaline. Um, you know, my tips really to get into a really good routine are, um, you know, just make the time, schedule the time in for you, take some downtime. It doesn't even have to be that you do anything. Write a list, you know, you know, if, you're, if your brain is absolutely jumbled and you can't quite cope with the things, write it down. And you will feel amazing just ticking those little things off. Um, maybe take, you know, I have a hot bath every night because that's something I really enjoy and I, I find it really therapeutic. Hot baths, reading, mindfulness. And really avoid the things that spike your um, stress and anxiety. Um, maybe it's social media, maybe it's toxic people in your life, maybe it's stimulants, maybe you know you're drinking too much and it's just not allowing you to switch off. Maybe you're... Um, you're on your phone before you go to bed and you're sort of frantic and then your mind's going crazy. Do, you know, if this is all part of your well-being and your, your good routine. So dedicate time to you and don't feel guilty. Um, you know, we, we, can, we can structure our days. I know it's difficult when you're, as I said, juggling, but you can make time to for yourself. And I think don't overlook, remember what I said in that first quote, our bodies and our health really really matter because we don't get a second chance you know we we have to um we have to make the most of what we have now um so um oh, that's gone off the grid i hope you can oh here we go no right so using those three pillars of nutrition fitness and well-being um you can achieve being able to reset so i want you to you know, use, hopefully you've joined this session today just to think about yourself a little bit more. And hopefully you understand the importance of reset, restarting, refocusing. And I think, as I said before, 1st of January always feels a little bit daunting, but 1st of September and September feels a little bit more, um, I don't know, realistic. It feels a little bit more, okay, I can do this. We've only got three months to go to the end of the year be positive be excited focus on you um and really just use it as a time to say do you know what enough is enough I, I i need to i need to get back on track i need to feel good again i need to get back on track i need to feel me and um i just think now is a brilliant time to do that rebalance yourself um so stop those unhealthy habits um restore some balanced nutrition because again I've been there where I've been eating the wrong thing you know I don't put myself first I'm literally 
just um, grabbing and going and um, I'm sort of, oh, just, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll think about that tomorrow. I just, I just need something comforting. I can't think about, you know, cooking something really big and healthy at the moment. But you can because there's so many quick wins. You know, you don't need to, you don't need to make this complicated, simple in order to get that balance back in your life. And then re-energize. So, you know, feel brighter, feel stronger. If you focus on your nutrition and fitness and the way, you know, the way you operate, you'll be able to cope with the things life throws at you. And um, I'm speaking from massive experience there. Um, it's taken me a long time, but, you know, without that and, and already, you know, the, the, I don't know of anyone else, but over the summer there was quite, you know, we're coming out of COVID. Are we going on holiday? Are we not going on holiday? Do I have my kids? Am I not going to have my kids? You know, there's so many sort of like, oh my God, what's going on? And already I feel, okay, let's do this. I'm feeling better within myself. Um, and I think we all need to take that time just to, um, to refocus ourselves. Um, I thought what I'd do is also um, just mention this. I've also, um, one of the ways in which I'm working with my clients at the moment is um, a bit of a 14 day detox package. And I put this together because I noticed a lot of people find it quite difficult just to, um, so all this great information I'm talking about here is, um, is all very well and brilliant, but how do you actually start it? And some people need that discipline. Other people are brilliant, you know, at sort of right, okay, they've got the tools, they're gonna make it happen. And the, the purpose of this detox is really just to give you the skills to sort of learn how to um, get yourself back on track. It provides you with Zoom so you can do some movement and it provides you with sort of real sort of education on why you should be eating um, and doing certain things. And um, so what it helps with is it eliminates your toxins. It aids with this digestion and the bloating and, and supporting your uh, gut it can reduce inflammation. So um, anyone's suffering when you wake up in the morning, you've got sore joints, or you're just feeling just sort of like all that stress is making your body on fire. Um, people who are often stressed or going through a massive change have lots of cravings. And I noticed a lot of clients say they can't give up things. I just can't give up things. This helps with that. It helps with your mood, your clarity, your um, your sleep. Oh my God, your sleep! Um, a lot of people who um, who have been through big changes, as I've said, find it very difficult to get into a good sleep routine. And when they are unable to sleep, they just can't get to sleep. And also, just boosting your skin and just helping you feel much stronger. So that's something that I've done. It works amazingly well, and it's something, funnily enough, I'm doing at the moment. I always do it pre doing it with my clients because um, I need it too. <laughs> um, so the whole principles of doing a detox, and you could take these principles. You could actually just do this on your own. So it sort of comes back to the things that I was talking about in terms of, you know, eat whole foods. I'll talk about the whole grains in a minute again. Increase your water intake, you know, get that liquid into you and be it through herbal teas or just um, filtered water. Stop eating processed foods. You know, if you're if you're somebody who just grabs and goes, it makes you start cooking real food again. Get rid of the alcohol and caffeine. As I said, I've never gonna, I'm have never i not going to give up my one coffee, but I'm certainly not um, boozing for, at the moment. <laughs> um, and also, you know, we, we know about the sugars. It plays with our mood. It plays with our um, energy levels. Um, get, you know, gluten and dairy. They also can play with our um, digestive systems and the way we feel. And also, you know, you might be feeling a little bit like you need to just lose a little bit of weight. Um, so that's that, that, that. So um, I think, you know, the whole point of everything I do, including my detox, including the nutrition and fitness, the whole well-being is, and this is something I really, really passionately believe is, you know, having a balanced and consistent way of eating full of nutrients, so full of the right foods, and some form of regular exercise will help you mentally as well as physically and not just now, but just in the future as well. Um, so I think, um, 
Yeah, I'm going to, I'm just looking at the questions coming in, which is great. I'm going to look at those in a minute. And I also think what it also does, so eating well, having a routine, having, um, having that focus makes you live in the present much more. And I was talking to a client a day, today about it because I think what we often do is we think about what our life should be ne uh, you know, next week or next month or next year, but cooking food, doing exercise, thinking about what you're consuming and having a hot bath, it puts you into the present and for me, when I was uh, when I was going through my divorce, and I really, really struggled with this, I kept thinking, but I, I need this, I need that. I didn't live in the moment. And it's, you know, it's only now through all this self-care and self-help and experience, I, I sort of live much more in the present. Um, and I think that would be great for everyone um, as well. Okay, I've been talking loads. I've got a couple of questions I need to answer. As I said, I don't want to bombard you too much. This is the tip of the iceberg, but questions to you. What would your three challenges be? How would you like to improve your nutrition? What are your weaknesses? Do you struggle with time? Are you keen to make changes? You know, it's all very well me saying you should do this and this and, and you saying, yeah, I think that sounds really good. But do you actually want to make the change? And if you do, you'll make it happen. And sometimes it's really hard to put those steps in front, but I promise you, as soon as you do, you, you know, you will, um, you'll keep going and you'll, you'll feel amazing. Um, and, you know, think about what, what would help you on a daily, weekly and long-term basis. Um, you know, some of you might have a diet coke addiction and they just, you know, or some of you might not be able to kick alcohol in vast quantities or you might just be somebody who eats chocolate literally three times a day but you know you just want to have it on a friday night as a treat you know it might be any of those things it might be that you just know you used to love exercise but you can't do it work out what you need it's all about you it's not about me it's not about the person next to you it's not about your ex it's you it's not about your kids it's you um, I'm just going to have a, just so just have a little think now I would love to answer some questions because we do have the time Okay, so we've talked about the green tea having caffeine. Um, yes, it does, but there are amazing antioxidant and anti-cancerogenic uh, benefits. Be careful having decaffeinated. Um, I'm, yeah, I would, I would look at the ingredients. Any tips to make wholemeal rice taste nicer? So I buy basmati wholemeal rice, whole grain rice because I do agree with you, the whole um, brown rice thing can be just a bit, a bit bland. And tonight, weirdly, this is no joke, I put in a, I put in a wok, um, some garlic, onion, courgettes, um, mushrooms, and I chucked in some cooked, I'd already cooked some um, basmati rice, I had it left over. And I just chuck that in with a bit of soy sauce, um, a little bit of chilies, coriander and some um, rocket. And um, it was amazing. And actually, if I'd have had some fish or chicken or prawns, I would have had that. But I didn't. And I just needed something. So when you're having whole grain rice, go for the basmati. Have it with um, have it with something tasty. You know, don't forget the soy sauce. I'm a big fan of um Asian dressing so things like sesame oil with um, soy sauce and chilies and ginger and garlic and stuff like that so um and you could also do with whole grain rice um you know you could chuck some peas in you could check some feta in you could have some you know just just think about what you like just anything goes um and I, yeah I hope that helps Mike any tips on motivation and keeping on track I'm great at sticking things for the first three days and then I really struggle and normally give up yeah do you know what that is I think that is uh, I've been there I'm all for day one Monday morning wake up oh my god I'm on a mission I'm gonna I've got my bottle of water I'm gonna go you know go for it and then by the end of the week I just can't do this anymore I just I'm much happier when I can have what I want I think you need to flip it. It's not, it, nothing's restricted. So I, I, you know, you mustn't ever think you're on a diet. You mustn't ever think that you're, you're restricting yourself. You just think, okay, I want to feel better. I want to, um, I want to, you know, I want, I want, I want to feel more energetic. I want to sort of be less bloated. I want to have, um, 
a better a better outlook you know less anxiety less stress and I think as I said make a plan maybe indulge yourself in pe in people be it online or books or friends that are have been through a similar journey to you that you know you can see oh my god she looks like she's she you know how and and just start to sort of educate yourself so and and write that list just think about okay by the end of September I want to have this I think it's planning it's preparing it's thinking about it in not as a you're, you're doing something because you have to. It's doing something because you want to. And um, that's why I guess committing to something like a 14-day detox or committing, right, this week and then Friday night's my cheat night. So you, I think, I think you've, you've got to want to, you've got to make that mental switch. And I think you can't get derailed. And I think that goes for anything in life. If you want it, if you want to go for it, um I'd be interested to know what things people really struggle to give up um let's just come on to Suzanne now Katie you have been feeling very lethargic um after carbohydrates often gluten new yeah okay oh sorry um okay so sorry I only just saw that um I think um Sorry, I didn't see that it was a direct message. I think a lot of people, just coming on to generally speaking, a lot of people do have lethargy, okay? There's a lot of people that um, struggle with their energy levels. And I think for women who are going through changes, also for men as well, you, you, you've got to look at the, look, look at the whole picture. My, my questions would be, um, back at anyone who's suffering with energy, I would look at your sleep. What are you drinking? And that includes caffeine, water, alcohol. What are you actually eating? And I think everyone thinks they are quite healthy, but actually let's break it down. Are you eating your green leafy vegetables? Are you detoxifying? Are you getting everything out? Are, do you have regular bowel movements? Because if you're not having regular bowel movements, you're gonna be sluggish and bloated that is just going to ultimately affect your energy and your mood. Um, I would be looking at um, anything else that's sort of, you know, what's going on in your life, because if you're stressed, you hold on to things as well. So I think, I think, you know, the whole energy thing is a really interesting subject. And as I said, I gain a lot of energy just through moving. And I think that a lot of people don't realize the power of just hydration and movement, you know, those two things are really, really, really key. Um, if you have any specific, pro you know, questions or issues that you want to just, um, I was actually going to say this next. Um, you can follow me on Instagram because there's loads of tips on there. But you could also book a free 15 minute call with me, and I'll try and give you some. Um, I try and give you some sort of um, top tips and just sort of put you in the right direction. And there's a bit of information on my website as well. But I think, you know, I think, as I said at the beginning, you've only got one body. You need to look after it. You need to nurture it. You need to think about yourself and our children, our babies, our, um, our people, our dependents are really important. But if we don't start putting in, you know, a lot of effort into ourselves, um it does catch up with us it really does I I had a burnout in my divorce I had Bell's palsy I had severe anxiety disorder and I've had to work my way through it and these these three pillars are the only way I've been able to get through it and um it's yeah it's massively helped me um and I you know I really hope it would help you too um so yeah any more questions from anyone anyone want to um any tips for reducing caffeine? Yeah, I think um, reducing caffeine is a really interesting one. And I know a lot of people that really struggle with this. And um, again, a lot of addictions. So coffee addicts, chocolate addicts, um, what else? I don't know, something, all those guilty pleasures. A lot of it's habitual. So most people are reaching out because it's seven o'clock in the morning, I have to have a mug of tea. Well, why don't you swap the first um, drink you have in the morning for a hot lemon and water or a herbal tea or a glass of water? 
So, so delay when you first have that caffeine. As I said, it might be that it's just non-negotiable non for you to give it up entirely, but just play around with the timings or say to yourself, um, okay, I'm allowed one tea in the morning and a coffee at 11, but in the afternoon I'm going for, um, I'm going for herbal teas. And at four o'clock, instead of that fifth cup of tea of the day, I'm going to have a little snack, a really healthy snack that gives you that little pick me up. Um, and um, yeah, you've got to just play around with it. And I think um, I wouldn't advise anyone necessarily to go cold turkey on reducing caffeine because you can get headaches, but slowly reduce it. Or if you know that you're somebody who has caffeine at certain times of the day, as I said, maybe at that, those particular times, do something different, get out of the habit, simple as that, replace it with another drink, replace it maybe instead of having your coffee at 11, you have a smoothie instead, um, you know, you, you, you just need to play around with it, and I think, um, I think, don't look at it as an addiction, look at it as a habit, and that might help you with your um, your regular intake of certain things. And that goes for not just caffeine, it can go for lots of different things too. Does any, what do you, do you recommend taking any vitamins? Yeah, this is a really, really interesting one, Ali. And I'm all about diet. I'm all about getting your, your health um, from what you consume. But obviously um, this is not always, <laughs> practical and it's not always easy and, and certainly if somebody's suffering with low energy or you're suffering with a gut imbalance or you're suffering with um, getting to sleep and staying asleep we might need to just put you on a, a, a supplement because let's face it our bodies can be depleted and they need a boost so for me I try not to take too much I take an amazing women's multivitamin that I would recommend if anyone wants the details of that, I'm really happy to share. Um, I take a women's uh, multivitamin and I also take vitamin D drops during the winter because it's difficult for us to get the vitamin D. Vitamin D, we all know probably because of COVID, I'll send it to you, um, is amazing for our immune system, for bone health. Um, so it's really important. And what else? Yeah, uh, I mean... Again, it depends what your issues are. I don't believe that you should pump your bodies. A lot of people take a regular probiotic to help gut imbalance and to help that regularity. It's not something I need to do, but I try and eat the right food to give me that balance. But um, there, if, if, uh, if there was one thing I would recommend is taking a really good multivitamin. If you are somebody that struggles to get, hit your sort of, um, should teenagers have vitamins? In an ideal world, no, Every in an ideal world, no, nobody should be having vitamins, you know, in an ideal world, we should be having a balanced diet. But um, I've got a lot of friends with um, teenage daughters who are struggling at the moment. It seems to be a lot of um, disorderly eating, shall we say, and girls don't like to eat so much. So I have recommended a couple of things actually that are good, that can, are either powders or chewy gummy things um in terms of you know uh, you've got to be clever with getting the right vitamins into kids I know so I'm a big fan of chopping up crudités and shoving shoveling it down them in a different way but um it depends everyone I would look at the individual I wouldn't say a blanket yes but I wouldn't say a blanket no either um and if we all sometimes we all need a boost and if that comes in the form of a, a multivitamin or a specific thing I I would I wouldn't hesitate um, a great thing for teenagers is really brilliant is give them smoothies, put a bit of protein powder in, put handfuls of green, uh, green uh, leafy vegetables, get some berries in there, uh, maybe a banana, some nuts. Honestly, that's a really great tip for kid, um, teenagers, especially if they're reluctant to be eating um, greens and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy to send out some um, some recommendations um, and certainly the women's multivitamin, which I, I love. Um, but please, any more questions from anyone? Does anyone have anything? I know I feel like I've been talking at you. I hope this has been useful. I know it's, 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 um, it's always interesting when you don't know, I know the audience, but I don't know the audience. 
and um, it's the tip of the iceberg. I just wanted to share some, you know, really important things that I'm passionate about. As I said, my Instagram, I try and put loads of free top tip information on there, recipes. Um, but I also am really happy to have a quick chat with anyone who's in a bit of a pickle and doesn't know which way to turn. So please feel free to, you can get my details off my website. Um, I know what it feels like to be in a, you know, in a little bit of a rut or feeling a bit overwhelmed. And I'm in no way um, a successful story, but I'm trying my best. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. Oh. Thank you so much, Katie. It's been brilliant. Oh, brilliant. Thanks, um, Tam. That's kind of you. Um, as I said, I would love to hear any more questions. If you don't feel comfortable putting anything on the chat there, you can just um, let me know. <laughs>